Okay, in this discussion, I'm going to be talking about interferons, what they do, and what their clinical usages are. This is a picture of what interferons, an example of what they look like. Interferons are a family of cytokines, and cytokines are proteins that carry signals between cells. So interferons were actually the first um, family of cytokines to be discovered. These interferons were discovered in 1957 by an Alec Isaacs and a Gene Lindenman. And they were discovered when they were experimenting, they were working with viruses and they noticed that there was a, um, that these virus infected cells were secreting a protein that could cause the non-infected and the infected cell to produce another protein that prevented the virus from replicating. So um, and that's how they discovered these interferons and they named them interferons because they so they had the ability to interfere with the growth of a living virus, which was proven by their experiment and what they discovered. Um, interferons are divided into three different groups. Now, we have type 1, type 2, and type 3. Type um, 3 is rather new. It was just discovered in 2003, but we'll get to that when we get to the type 3. Um, type 1 is also subdivided into two other categories, and that would be interferons alpha and interferons beta. It doesn't really look like a beta, but interferons alpha and interferons beta. Um, type 1 uh, interferons, they are known for the ability to make cells resistant to viral infections. Um, and they, these type 1, unlike type 2, which we'll get to that when we get to type 2, these type 1 interferons can be produced by every cell in the body, not just special specific cells. Um, so they can be produced by any cell in the body. And they are secreted by virally infected cells, but that's only after the recognition of components, um, viral components. Of, um, and these, the recognition is done by PRRs, which are pattern recognition receptors. And these ex receptors are interferon receptors, so, and we call those PRR. And so, um, so they are secreted by these virally infected cells. Now, interferon beta can be can be secreted by macrophages, dendritic cells, and virally infected cells. So that's a little different there. Um, interferons alpha is a family of 20 related proteins. And that's a little different there. Um, so now I'm going to talk about between um, uh, interferons alpha and beta, the diseases that they can help with. Before I get into that, um, I just want to mention that they interferons help with these diseases by being they are injected straight into the bloodstream that's how we use interferons so interferons alpha the first thing that the disease that it was noticed to help was um hair hairy cell leukemia and it's named this because of the fine hairs on the outside of the cell so it was first noticed to be helping with that disease um and then it was noticed to help with chronic hepatitis and that's hepatitis c and hepatitis b um, it also helped with Hodgkin's lymphoma, was another disease that helped genital warts. Um, it also helps a disease or a sickness that you can get if you're infected with the AIDS virus, and it's called Carposis sarcoma. So those are a couple examples of the diseases that can be helped with the interferon alpha. Now the interferon beta also helps with many things, and. Um, one of them is chronic granulomatis. modest. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but that is what um, interferon beta was discovered to help with first. Then it also helps with immune disorders, but these immune disorders are, it's specific to the immune disorders that um, the white blood cells cannot, they're unable to kill the bacterial infections by themselves. So it helps with those immune disorders. Um, so now we're going to move on to our type 2, and the type 2, um, or gamma, is what we call them. Um, so type 2 cells are, um, they have the ability to uh, regulate the overall immune system functioning. So um, they're different than the type 1. And as I said about the type 1, the type 1 cells can be produced by every cell in the body. Type 2 um, interferons cannot. Type 2 interferons um, can only be produced by specialized cells. And they, those specialized cells are the T lymphocytes and the, um, the T lymphocytes and the natural killer cells. And I think I actually had a picture. So that was our type 1 um, model and how they work, which I forgot to show um, earlier. 
Okay, and so this is just comparing the type 1 and type 2 and the difference in them. So here's the type 1 mechanism that we saw on the first page, and then this is the type 2 mechanism that we saw on the next page. So this was just um, going to show the difference in the two. Um, so the type 2 are powerful modulators of the adaptive immune system. Um, and as I said, you know, you, they don't just, they can't be produced by just any cell. They have to be produced by a certain cell, which you can see in this um, figure. Um, let's see. And this is just um, another chart I put on here to show the differences in what, so this is alpha and beta, so that will be our type 1, and this is the gamma, which would be our type 2, and it shows the differences um, in what they play parts of. Um, so T cell specific, which we, we just talked about how it's more specific, and then this one isn't as specific. Um, so those were the charts that I had to show you. Okay, so now we're going to move on to our type 3 cells. Now our type 3 cells, as I said, are rarely new. They were just discovered in 2003. Um, and uh, they were first discovered because they noticed that it helped um, bring or helped pregnancy like um, helped induce it, help bring pregnancy or make it go faster in cows and sheep and goats. That's how um, the type 3 interferons were um, noticed. And then after that, we started studying type 3 interferons and realized that they block tumor um, division and interfere with the replication of the AIDS virus, which is very important. So um, they've been doing a lot more research on the type 3 cells now than they are on the other interferons, and that's for many reasons. Um, all of these interferons obviously come with side effects, and these side effects, um, there was a list of them, but most of them are just flu-like symptoms and normal side effects, not the um, really bad side effects that are rare occurrences. Um, but these flu-like symptoms can be fever, chills, headache, pain, muscle spasms, muscle pain, things like that. But they have seen realized that these type 3 cells um, have less symptoms. So they've been researching the type 3 cells more and because the AIDS virus is such a big deal with no um, cure, so they've been researching our type 3 cells more. Um, so the type 3 cells, um, they uh, upregulate the expression of gene controlling um, viral replication, which is how they help in the AIDS virus. As I stated earlier, um, they interfere with the replication of the AIDS virus, which is extremely important. They also uh, regulate the expression of host cell proliferation, which also is how it helps with the, um, to block the cell division and interfere with the AIDS virus. Um, so all three of these interferons are very important and help with multiple, multiple diseases. But we, as I said earlier, we're researching more on the type 3. They also believe the type 3 is going to be able to help with more diseases. Um, our type 2 also helps with multiple sclerosis. It help, this is back on our type 2, our gamma. I forgot to mention that it helps with multiple sclerosis as well as our beta in type 1. But in type 2, it helps um, get rid of the symptoms. So they um, not as much pain, not as much symptoms of it with our type 2 interferon. So those are our interferons of the cytokine family and um, the diseases they can help with.